want to do a review here of the Quick Scan King James Bible. This thing is put out by the Berean Bible Publishers, and uh, it's an interesting new twist on Bible perversion. I'm going to show you here what I mean. Here we have the Holy Bible, Complete Authorized King James Version in Quick Scan, Berean Bible Publishers. There's the address, the website. Here's what the outside of it looks like. Okay, you can see that. Let me show you some of the stuff in here. <clears throat> Copyright. The reprinting of any parts of the main content and the additions to this Bible without the author's permission is forbidden. Notice it says additions to this Bible. Okay, not E, you know, additions, ah, additions. They are adding things, in other words. You're going to see what things are added here in a minute. But very interesting because here I have my Cambridge, my good old Cambridge Bible. Okay, rights in the authorized King James Version of the Bible are vested in the crown. Does it say anything about uh, you can't copy it, you can't, you know, no part of it can be copied or anything? Uh, no, doesn't say anything about that. The only thing that's quote-unquote copyrighted about this Bible here is the fact that it's a Cambridge. All right, you can't print your own King James Bible and put Cambridge on it. That's what's going on there. But this one, because they changed the text, now they can say this thing is copyrighted. Interesting. But let me show you here what they do with what the quick scan scam is. How quick scan benefits you. Quick scan words. By reading the bold words only, you will reduce reading time by up to two thirds, it says. You simply eliminate the necessity of reading about half the words. Now look at this. Words that can be left out without changing the overall meaning of the text. Words that can be left out without changing the overall meaning of the text. Remember that as I show you in the actual text how they pervert the scripture. But it says here, a consumer of large chunks, you know, but you eliminate uh, left to right, big head or big problem, as many have in reading, and also a consumer of large chunks of your valuable time. So reading the Bible is not part of valuable time. That's a problem. Quick scan also increases the understanding of most readers by making the text less complicated and easier, easier to follow. That's what all the new versions say. It's easier to follow. We're just trying to make it easier, trying to get rid of the old archaic and, you know, uh-huh, sure. Yes, after reading the exciting new quick scan way, you will never want to go back to the old way of reading. And that's exactly what this is all about. You don't want to go back to this old way of reading the Bible. See? Incredible. But let me show you here. Remember, see this this text over here, this, this stuff in here that's all big, you can read the big stuff and skip over the small, smaller print. Read the bold and skip over the smaller print here and it doesn't affect the meaning of the passage. I'm going to show you that there's definitely an agenda in removing certain key parts to skip over. But the men of Sodom were wicked. Uh, what about the and sitters before the Lord exceedingly? The sin of sodomy is an exceedingly wicked sin. But see, you remove that part. See? Hmm... Very interesting. Here you have Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish uh, aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. So you take out that you're to keep the commandments of the Lord? Hmm. Interesting why there might be some motivation to uh, take that part out. 
you know, let's just, just read right over that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't affect the meaning of the text. Sure it doesn't. Here we're in Psalm 2. It says here, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. It's talking about the worldwide conspiracy of all these leaders that are coming together to form the new world order. That's what this thing's talking about. One of the greatest verses in the entire King James Bible on the issue of the conspiracy to bring in the kingdom of Antichrist. But notice if you just read it without the, the smaller print there, it says the kings and rulers take counsel against the Lord and his anointed. Uh, no, it says that they set themselves. Kings of the earth set themselves. They take counsel together. So again, they're taking out some very, very, very key words here within that scripture. How about Psalm 12, verse 6? Here you have, uh, down here you have the words of the Lord are pure. Why make the words there lowercase? As silver tried in a furnace of earth. O Lord, thou shalt preserve them. Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. Furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them. You don't need to read that. That's not important. See? O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation for ever. And this isn't important. This portion of the scripture right here is not important. Sure. Psalm 105. You can see Psalm 105, verse 8. He hath remembered his covenant. And then you just go on to the next one. Now it says, He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. You talk about key scripture right there. But it's not important. See? It's not highlighted. It's not emboldened. So you just skip over that. That's not important. The fact that God has preserved you know, his word unto a thousand generations. Problem. It's almost like there's a spirit in these people that does not like the authority of the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Huh. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Why would they take hearing out? A wise man will increase learning. Huh. Problem. Proverbs 30 and verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee. Okay, let's go on to the next verse. Let's not read any more because our sin might be, you know, rebuked. Now it says, uh, Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Liars. Right there. Liars. Deceivers. Pretty incredible. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? For thou hast said, I will exalt my throne above God. Okay, that's it. We can all go home now. Why take out the uh, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will Exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. This thing gives you the direction of where heaven is located. The sides of the north. You go north. But that's not important, you see. That doesn't affect the uh, overall meaning of the text. Sure. How about uh, Jeremiah chapter 26? It says here, verse 2, uh, Thus saith the Lord, 
Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house. All the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. But that's not important, you see. So you just put that, this whole section here, you put that in the lowercase, or not lowercase, but the, you know, not the big bold up here. It's not the quick scan. You just skip over that part there where it says, diminish not a word. Don't tell me that's a coincidence. Don't tell me this is just, eh, you know, it's just your opinion or whatever. This is a purposeful cover-up right here. This thing is just as perverted as any other new version out there. In fact, I'd say it's worse because they're coming in and actually taking God's word away. We go back here, it says... I, re, I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them. Why? Because of the evil of their doings. So again, you take out because of the evil of their doings. See? <laughs> okay. You know, up here they're, they're diminishing the words. They're not, commit, they're not following God right there. And say, I'm going to repent of the evil that I was going to do unto them. But then you don't tell the people why. You just skip that part. Go to the next verse. On to the next verse. Let nothing to see here. Uh huh. Because of the evil of their doings. What are the evil of their doings? They're taking away the words. Just like these perverts that made this thing. Ezekiel chapter 28. Talking about the anointed cherub that covereth. Uh, Satan in his pre-fall uh, condition here. It says... Uh, wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, but thou shalt be a man and no God? Wait a second there. Why take that part out? That's very important. See? Satan is saying, I'm a God. I am God, he's saying there. So you just skip on to the next one. Whoa, no, no, whoa, 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 wait a second here. You've got to see what God says to Satan. The Lord says, but thou shalt be a man and no God, capital G. Very important. Don't tell me you get the whole the meaning of the text here without these words here. No, you don't. And again, you go down here. In the day that thou wast created. Talking about the anointed cherub. The day that thou wast created. Why don't these people want you to read that? That Satan is a created being. Hmm. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Go to the next verse. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just hold on there. Hold your horses here. What do we have? Two very important prophecies of the end times. First, you have money. many shall run to and fro. Talking about all the travel that goes on today. And knowledge shall be increased. The advent of the internet, knowledge has increased exponentially. I mean, we're talking huge amounts of knowledge. And I realize, you know, there are people that get on the internet for the wrong reasons. I realize that some people just get on the internet for playing video games and whatever else. You know, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about if you want to find information, the internet has many great sources. It doesn't get away, it doesn't, you know, you shouldn't get away from books. It doesn't do away with books is what I meant to say. The internet does not do away with books. You still need to be a good reader, okay? And of course, you definitely need to be reading your King James Bible, not this thing, but, you know, a real King James Bible, all right? But the internet definitely has increased knowledge. Why take it out? Just skip that part. You don't need to read it. Just skip it. Sure. Amos chapter 5 here in verse 5 it says, But seek not Bethel. You know what Bethel is in the Old Testament? Beth there means the house, El of Elohim, God. So it's saying, seek not the house of God, essentially. You know, I have to say that to modern day people as well. There are few, very, very few, if any, church buildings that I could even recommend. All right? And, of course, none of them are scriptural. You know, you have to understand that. None of them are, you know, God never told anybody, hey, build a church building there in the Bible. 
you know, that's not there. But the point is, most of them that are out there now are falling to pieces. And you have to say, hey, don't go to those places. Seek not that place. Now, they've, they're not the house of God. Hold their subject there. But the point is, why is this put in lowercase there again? It's a pretty important thing. How about this one here? They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. It's not important. Just skip to the next verse. Just, just you know, actually it's the later part of the next verse, verse 11 there. Just skip. Just go ahead. You don't need to read that. No, no. You know, that won't help you in your life as a Christian when you're trying to witness to people and everybody hates you. You know? And you can find the tie-ins there. See? Your life, friend, your life is just too busy. Don't waste time with reading every word of this book. It doesn't apply to you anyhow. It's just old and archaic. Uh-huh. Sure. <coughs> I like this one. Matthew chapter 24. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and ye shall hear of wars. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. And shall deceive many. Covering up for their Catholic friends, apparently. The priests that call themselves other Christs, you know. And they do, you know. So you got to take that and shall deceive many thing out. How about uh, over here in Matthew 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass, but my words shall not pass. Why take uh, away? They shall pass what? Pass the offering plate? Pass a motorcycle going 100 miles an hour? Why, why take away? Uh, I guess because they took it away. <laughs> Strange. Here's a good one. I think you're going to like this one. Here we are in Mark. It says chapter 10, but that's because it's here. Mark chapter 9. Now, if you have a NIV, if you're aware of what the NIV does, they take out verse 44 and verse 46, and they leave in verse 48. Alexandrian philosophy, see. Let's see what these uh, quick scan people do. Berean Bible Publishers. Verse 44. Not at all highlighted. It's not bold. So you just skip that verse. How about verse 46? Yep. Skip it. Not important. But verse 48's in. Isn't that special? Isn't that nice? You can just do it the same way that the new versionists do it. Classy. On to the next one. John chapter 8, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Well, if you're reading this thing and you're going with a quick scan approach, you wouldn't even read that verse. Talk about not hearing the word, you'd skip right over it. You know? I mean, it's ridiculous. Verse 47, he that is of God heareth God's words, ye are not of God. Huh? Why take out uh, ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God? It's almost like the people that made this thing get under conviction when they see certain verses there that are condemning their sin. And they just kind of, let's not make that part bold there. You can quickly scan past that verse, that, that nasty little thing that attacks people like us, you know. Let's just, we'll sell the Bible better that way, and then we can get our copyright on it, and then nobody else can make copies of it, and we'll make all the money. you got to love this one. Who prints this Bible? Berean Bible Publishers. The Bereans. Acts chapter 17 and verse 10. The brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. 
Therefore, many of them believed. What? Huh? Excuse me? The publishers, they name themselves after this group here, and yet they remove, they tell you, read, skip past this whole verse. This verse does not affect the meaning, the text. You know, you, you, don't, you don't need it to get the overall feeling of the whole. Look at this. These were no more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. It's the Berean. We're Bereans. We put out the quick scan. But then we tell you not to read the verse that defines what a Berean is. Okay. Um, and he... Do you think if these uh, believers at Berea, if they were searching the scriptures daily, whether those things are so, it almost it almost sounds to me like they'd be studying every single word of the Bible. Do you think? Yeah. You don't need to read it, though, because you have a busy day ahead of you, and the Bible is just supposed to be like fast food. Just read through it as quick as you can, put it away, go back to do whatever you do. Romans chapter 13. Look at the Ten Commandments here, or the, the commandments that are given for the New Testament Christian. You don't have to read these. They're not important. You can skip those nasty ones like, uh, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Kind of like, uh, you know, add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Liars add to the word of God. They embolden certain words and tell you you don't need to read the rest because it won't affect the meaning of the text. That's a lie. That's called bearing false witness. So you tell the people, don't bother reading that nasty thing there in Romans chapter 13, verse 9. It, it'll hurt your self-esteem. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 says here, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Oh, it's much better to just say, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and avoid them. You don't want to learn about doctrine here. See? Yeah, you don't, don't waste your time on all this doctrinal stuff. You know, Just read through the Bible quick. By good words and fair speeches to see the hearts of the simple. Kind of like the introduction to this thing. Incredible. All right. How about this one here? We're in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. If any man teach otherwise, he is proud knowing nothing from such withdrawal. Uh, what? You don't need to read any of this, and you don't need to read any of that, and you don't need thyself from such withdrawal. Huh? Well, uh, isn't it a little important to put thyself there? Not very good English, just say from such withdrawal. But look at this. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. That, boy, that doesn't affect the passage now, does it? How about down here? But doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Kind of like, uh, you know, perverting the text of the King James Bible and then slapping a copyright on it and threatening people. Don't you dare, don't you dare show this thing electronically and don't, don't use it and don't do this and do, do that. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. See? Incredible. And by the way, what about 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10? For the love of money is the root of all evil. Go to the next verse. Uh, what about uh, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith, these are saved people, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Kind of like people claiming to be Christians and putting out 
a wicked perversion like this of the King James Bible. Pretty disgusting. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, it says there, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. So you take out of God, you just say the word is not bound. You mean to tell me that that's not important? I mean, you know, you, you can't just make that, those two little words right there, bold print. A little odd. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, but shun profane and vain babbling. Huh? Rightly dividing the word. It's not of truth, it's just the word. See? No, it's of truth. And these people are definitely workmen that need to be ashamed. Look over here. 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Skip that thing for sure, buddy. I mean, hey, you don't want to have to depart from iniquity. You know, get right past that one. Go to the next verse. Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 4. You know, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, for the time will come when they will not endure. And they shall turn away from the truth. Huh? Why are they taking out doctrine in both places there? The time will come when they will not endure. And they shall turn away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They won't endure what? They won't endure a, a hard day of work? They won't endure going without food for a while? No, it's they won't endure sound doctrine like these people in this thing. You don't have time to read the whole thing. Just scan it, man. Just scan it. Pretty bad. Second Peter 3. I like this one too. Now look at this. Paul hath written things hard to be understood. Ye therefore beware lest ye also fall from your own steadfastness. Yeah, boy, that, that just, you get the whole meaning of the thing there. Uh-huh. No, it says, uh, As also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction people have some serious answering to do tell you what what's another one of the favorite places for the new perversionists to attack the King James Bible the Johannine comma they call it 1st John chapter 5 verse 7 let's see what they do for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. If we receive the witness, we'll, you know, put on the brakes here. Wait a second, what did we miss? Well, apparently it's not important because anything that's in bold print, you quickly scan it and you get the meaning of the text without all the nasty bother of actually having to spend a few more seconds reading the rest of the words. Look what they took out. These three are one. These three agree in one. Two of the greatest verses in the entire King James Bible proving the Godhead. Three in one. But they take it out in one. Kind of peculiar, isn't it? Revelation 18. Down here we have, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth. Um, all great cities reign. Duh. <laughs> you know, that, that great city that reigns, that reigneth. 
Yeah. No, you gotta, you got to get all the words to make it make sense. Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Reigneth over the kings of the earth. What is the only city that does that? What is the only city in the entire world that has world politicians going to the city and bowing down to the Pope and kissing his ring or kissing his feet or whatever else? And again, uh, interesting why they would cover up for the Vatican. Hmm. That's what you call a coincidence now, folks. I wasn't implying that it was a conspiracy or anything like that because we know that anybody that would change or twist the King James Bible, it's just innocent and they're really trying to help Christians and they wouldn't be Jesuits or anything like that. Don't believe such things. Sure. Revelation chapter 20. Look at this one. It says about they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and they lived and reigned with the Christ a thousand years. Uh, what about, uh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands? That's not important. Just skip right over that part. I mean, because after all, you know, you got John MacArthur and any, you know, a lot of these other modern liars out there that are telling people, you can take the mark of the beast and you can still go to heaven. So you just skip that part. I mean, who has time to read every word in the Bible? I mean, come on. I'm just too busy. We'll end up here with uh, the last part of the Bible. Revelation 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto the things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Kind of like adding these highlighted emboldened words. But look at the next one. Verse 19, And if any man will, shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, why take the words of the book of? Why take these words and say you don't need to read that to get the meaning of the text? Just skip that part. And if any man shall take away from the prophecy, from this prophecy, no, 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 no. The words of the book. You see how they're doing it? From the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And that about does it for the Quick scam, King James Bible. Don't waste your money on one of these things. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay? God has a reason for you to read every single word in this King James Bible. And I'll tell you right now, there are whole, every verse of Scripture, you know, in reality, but there are, there are whole passages of Scripture that hang on one or two words within the verse. And to take away any part of those verses destroys the text, destroys the meaning. So when this thing comes out and says, you don't need to read everything. I mean, you're busy. You know, hey, you know what David said? He said that the words of God were more to be desired than his necessary food. They were sweeter than honey to his taste. The Word of God should be the most important thing in your life. And anybody coming along and saying, you don't need to read the whole thing, just scan over it. Because if the parts that you, you know, some of these verses, not important. That's satanic right there. Brian Bible publishers, you should be ashamed of yourself. Putting out a bunch of wicked trash like that and then copy, po copywriting the thing. How dare you copyright God's Word? And I realize you've twisted it. You know, it still reads like the King James Bible, at least I think so, you know. But the fact of the matter is, perverting it like that and getting people to basically stealing the words of God from people, you're going to answer for that. 
you're going to answer big time for that. Don't waste money on a quick scan scam of a King James Bible. Put your money and your time into a good authorized King James Version. All right? Get a good Cambridge, get a good local church Bible publisher's King James Bible and read it and study it. And if you're too busy to read it, then you need to check your life, you need to check your priorities, and you need to reorganize your life and put the book first. That'll be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.